I'd now like to introduce the next speaker. Bill Campbell was a longtime executive of Apple. Many of you know Bill. He's been a member of our board of directors since 1997, since Steve returned, and he is a very dear friend of Steve's. He is someone Steve often reached out to for advice and counsel, and his contributions to Apple and to the many individuals in Apple have been countless. He is fondly known as the coach from both his days at Columbia as head football coach, his tireless efforts supporting local sporting teams, and his unselfish mentoring of so many of Silicon Valley's executives. We are thrilled that he's with us today. Bill? Thanks, Tim. Wow. Wow. I'm humbled by this. Humbled for the opportunity to have my time to talk about Steve, my friend. I came to Apple in 1983. I had been at Kodak in Europe. I worked almost immediately with Steve and his team on the Mac. Oh my goodness, what an experience. Steve challenged everything, forced me to have answers as to why. Experience didn't matter, great ideas mattered. Nothing is what it was. Not because he wanted it to be different, he just wanted it to be better. He wanted it to be great. Everything we did, every ad, every retail communication, every detail and every product, inside or outside. I learned and I learned from him. When I was in sales, he wanted the sales organization changed. He wanted the people in the sales organization to look like the rest of us. We had manufacturers rep firms that he was unhappy with. We made a change in the summer and hired 400 people that matched his sense of what kind of people should be at Apple. Think about the brilliance of the Macintosh, the difficulty we had in getting it accepted. Think about the things that he did to make sure that the Macintosh was accepted in universities, the Apple University Consortium. Committed Macintosh penetration for generations. Tim mentioned desktop publishing, laser printer, PostScript, his fanatic approach to fonts, desktop publishing. Then the Mac stall. Scully pushed him out the door. He was gone. Tragic. Apple. Apple was done. I left shortly after. We've always, had always kept in touch. When he was at Next, he used to challenge me all the time, why are you still there? <laughs> Take in your first class travel and limos to the airport. <laughs> Get the hell out of there and do something important. <laughs> During that time, he met Laureen, and it changed his life. And all of us here now participated in a miracle. Apple bought next. He was back. And he allowed me to be part of it. August 1997. Then I learned even more. He changed. Yes, he had been charismatic, passionate, brilliant. But I watched him become a great manager. And I learned from that. Detailed in everything. Products, of course, but the way he ran the finance organization, what he did with operations, logistics, and having Tim there, somebody that shared his vision of how an operation should be run, made us all better. You read all about this last week. 
those things that, that he saw things that others couldn't see. He had an incredible mind, conceptual, logical. Think about the great things that Tim mentioned. Apple stores, iPod, iTunes, iPhone, iPad. He dismissed as arrogant the technology leaders in the world who thought that we were all stupid because we couldn't use these devices. And he said, we're stupid if they can't use these devices. He saw the future. We'd walk and he would talk about things that I could never even conceptualize. And nothing would deter him. He pushed, he pushed everyone, he pushed me, he pushed the board constantly. What a leader he became. He hired great people. And they did the same. And look right, left, front, back, you're it. The results counted. You are the people who made this happen. It's a company without politics. When he knew about seven and a half years ago about his illness, he didn't sulk. He fought. He fought hard. He loved Apple so much, probably only a shade less than he loved his family. He was feisty. He challenged us all. He liked, he loved, he gave. He learned. He taught us all. He demanded excellence in everything he created. And in those seven and a half years, as he became more vulnerable, he made sure that those that he loved, those were closest to him, knew it. To those people, he exuded the phenomenal warmth, humor. He confided. He shared. A true friend. Yes, I'm a member of the board, and he loved his board. He did. And when he wanted to step down as CEO, he wanted to do it personally. He came in to talk to us. And then he stayed for the board meeting, the presentations that were going on. And he always had that wonderful warmth with us that we just were so attracted to him by. Scott Forrestal was demoing the new phone and he was demonstrating Siri. And Scott did it a couple of times and Steve was across the room and he said, let me have that phone. <laughs> and Scott said, uh, uh, be, be careful now, we, I, you know, I, I have this uh, pretty much attuned to my voice, give me the phone. <laughs> so <laughs> Scott goes around and hands him the phone, Steve asks a couple of benign questions and then he says, are you a man or are you a woman? <laughs> and Siri came back and said, they have not assigned me a gender, sir. <laughs> he loved all of us that had anything to do with Apple. Thank you all very much. Thanks for being here.